What's up everybody, Elizabeth here with Bloom Creative Company, a Squarespace design agency. And in this video, it's actually a three-part series of everything content block editors. So all those little blocks that you can add into your site to add text or video or a space or a line, we're going through every single one of those and how to adjust them, how to make them more custom and how to use them in your site. So this is part one, two, and three. Let's dive in. Click on this and we go down to spacer. We kind of covered line. So this is a, a fun way that I usually add color. So if there's branding and it's a simple looking site and I want to do like a pop of color, I would do a line. You can use lines to break up content. There's, you can, you know, you can, you can use a line for whatever design purposes, but it's just basically a line and it follows the same suit too. Like if you want to just have it above and below the image, you just want, you're going to want to make sure that that black line hovers just over that part. It's starting to look like the wonkiest web page uh, button. So if we are linking your button to book a discovery call to the contact page, to more of our services, whatever that is, you're going to change the text here. You're going to click this gear and this is where you are going to link your button to. So if you wanted to link it to an outside website, always, always, always open a new window because if you bounce someone off your site, you work so hard to get them there. Don't make it easy for them to leave and not be able to find you again. So if you link outside of your website, <clears throat> excuse me, always open it up in a new window page. This is going to pull up pages in your site. So if you wanted to link the button to a certain page, this is for email. If you put your email here and then you can add a subject for them if it's on a certain page or if it has to do with anything on your site uh, specifically to emailing about it, troubleshooting or, you know, interested in an offer, you'd put that there and then it would open up, they would click the button and it would open up their email. Phone, very self-explanatory, it'll call you and a file. So if you wanted to have a PDF download so if I grabbed a file, so here's my lead magnet right now, five ways to improve your website with no extra cost. So if I open that up and I uploaded the file, I'm going to click on it. So a check mark appears and I'm going to hit save. Now we can change the button to be small, medium, or large. And we'll go into more design customization with color and font in a later video. But for right now, we're going to keep it like this. Medium is fine, alignment, maybe we want it to the left, apply. I'm gonna click save so I can show you what this looks like. So I have a download in this button right now. I'm gonna go back to preview mode. I'm gonna click the button and boom, there is your download. So if someone wanted to download, they could just download this like any normal download. Now, what did I just do? It did not open up in a new window. So we're gonna go back. and we're going to go back to this gear, we're going to open it in a new window. So it creates a new tab in their browser so they're not bouncing off your site. So there is your button. Audio. So this is where you would upload an MP3. So if you're a band, I don't recommend putting background music in websites anymore. I feel like that was kind of a long time ago thing, but I just, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, but that's how you would add an audio file. This is where you're going to live right here. So you're going to put your title, author, artist, and that's how it's going to show up here. Podcasts, this is where you're going to plug in all of your podcast information here. And then design if you wanted it, you know, classic, minimal, show download link, player color, dark, light. Good, good. And we're going to keep going down. We're not going to use this embed here. These are, these are different image layouts. If you notice, they're, they look kind of familiar. That's because it's the same image layouts that we found within this image editor. So it's kind of a quicker way to get there. So if we want to do this collage, upload an image into that. You'll see that once we hit this design button, it's going to give you all the same options. So if you pick one, you're like, oh, that doesn't look right. I, instead of just deleting it and having to re-upload and start the whole process again, just head over the, to the design and you can pick a new one here. 
So we go here, so we have, now we have the summary. Now this is a little bit more complex and we have to have a gallery set up or a blog or um, products or, or shop. So if we click here to grid, we'll hit apply for now. I'm gonna start a blog really quick just to, here we'll do our demo and we'll get it live. Come on. Okay, we're just gonna copy the page. Perfect. Okay. So that is the template blog. All right. Come on. So if we go back to our test page, I'm going to go to edit, go all the way back down. It did not like that. Let's give it a sec. Maybe we'll refresh the page. Perfect. All right, under edit, we're scrolling down. We're in this summary block right here. So we're gonna click this. So here is that blog that we had under news. So this is a way that we are going to showcase the first three, four, five, however many blog articles. So in this situation, let's do our first two. So if we're going to, we go over here to layout, Here's our aspect ratio. Maybe we want this in a square. Maybe it's going on our homepage, going somewhere. And we want less. We're going to make this gutter width, column, sorry, column width a little bit bigger to push out that third one. Maybe the space in between is too much. We want to, now we got to wait a second and let it catch up. Perfect. So we eliminated some of that space here and we could even take that a little bit further. So if this is, you know, on our homepage and we want to showcase our three most recent blog article articles or you're categorizing a certain product with new arrivals or new female arrivals in shirts or whatever that looks like, this is how you're going to display those with the click through to the article or the product or the gallery image. So under display, I only want two images, so I'm going down to two. We're showing the title, we're showing the thumbnail. So if I removed all these, all that information goes away. Right now it's the date. Maybe I don't want the date, and I just want the thumbnail that's back and the title. There is an excerpt if we want it. Maybe we don't. And then these are your other options for the metadata. So right now it's a blog, so it gives you the option of date posted, categories, tags, author location, comments, and then you have the same as well, so you can post two of those. You can categorize it by a filter, so when you are creating a blog or a product or a gallery, you're able to add a tag to it, whether it's a category or a tag, and then this is where you would come back and categorize it. So if I jump back over to the blog just to show you how to categorize, maybe we'll add a category really quick under portfolio, maybe it's under this first one. Oops. We're going to edit, click the gear. I'm in the completely wrong spot. That's our portfolio, isn't it? Okay, we're going to go back to our news. Ooh. Okay, so we're under edit, click the gear, categories. Maybe we want best sellers or most read article, how about we do that? Most read, enter, I'm gonna click on it, make sure it's down there, most read, apply, save. So if we go back down to our test page, and we only want our most read articles, we're gonna go back down here, edit, display, it's going to show our category filters here. So most read, what we just had. So now it's, we only put that tag on that one article and now it's gonna show that one article. I hope that makes sense. Let me know in the comment section if that doesn't make sense, if you want more explanation. We'll do, we'll do a blog post and how to set all that up later, but that is how you would best put that into your summary. So let's say you wanted a different display for your summary. Let's remove this so we have both of those back. Maybe we want four of our most recent, even though there's only three. You can do a list, carousel, or a wall. 
with all this does not change as you change throughout the different layouts. But that would be your different ways of displaying information. And again, if I hit apply and save, when I click on these, it's going to go directly to that article. There it is. All right, that was part two. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you got out of that. If you, if you enjoyed it, if you need a little bit more, we're here for you and we want to help make building on your Squarespace site as easy as possible. So let us know how we can serve you best. And if you are a business and you are stuck, please send us an email to hello at bloomwebsitedesign.com. That's what we do. That's what we're here for. We just want to help you get your message out to the world. So let us know what you need help with. Um, other than that, smash that subscribe button. Stay tuned for the last video in this three-part series and we'll keep rolling with all those content editing pieces and then beyond with our next videos that we'll produce put out there for you. So thank you again for being here. We'll see you on the next video.